Welcome to Courageous Leadership with Virginia Prodan, training you to lead with courage. Hello, everyone. I'm Virginia Pradhan, the host of Courageous Leadership with Virginia Pradhan. Welcome back to our, our podcast. And for those of you who are new, welcome to our podcast. I hope you will subscribe for free and you will never miss another podcast. It's audio and video on YouTube. Today, we are, I we am responding to many of your questions and concern, how to overcome fear. I have been here in America for over 30 years, almost 35 years soon. I had seen lots of changes, not only in America as a nation, but in American people as individuals. Fear is one of the things that I notice. We are living in America in a different kind of America. We never experience in America a government who will persecute us, uh, mock us, or threaten us for being Christians. And fear is uh, a normal feeling. It's true that oh, we shouldn't live under fear. You know, Spurgeon said we should trust God. Spurgeon said it is not a brave thing to trust God to true believer. Let me say it one more time. It is not it is not a brave thing to trust God. To true believers, it is a simple matter of sweet necessity. And it's so true. Trusting God when you have fear of this unknown that surrounds us every single day, it's a matter of sweet necessity. Testing God in the face of well-founded fear proves the authenticity of our faith. We are called to commitment to God, not to comfort on this earth. Faith in Christ brings great blessing to us. We know all of this about that, but often great sufferings too. And because American people never suffer for Christ. It's a new chapter in many lives of Americans. Fear becomes part of um, part of life, um, and we have not only to acknowledge, but also to make sure that we understand how to deal with fear, how to overcome fear. Um, I know that God will save us, you and me, from the fire and through the fire. But fear is still part of Many of you maybe for sure read my, uh, my memoir, uh, Saving My Assassin. Um, you can find it at virginiaprodanbooks.com. And I hope as many of you noticed reading my book, that I had fear when I was in Romania and fighting a cruel dictator. I have fear sometimes here in, in America when darkness and uh, attitude, uh, attitude against Christians are more and more aggressive. That's a normal feeling. But that is a way to deal with fear and overcome fear. Uh, it's so interesting that uh, in my book, Saving My Assassin, and I will give you even the page, at page 123, I, um, I was praying after um, I took a case to defend Christians and as I was uh, followed by secret police and arrested and tortured, I was wondering if I need to take that case and what's going to happen when I will continue to defend Christians. And uh, I remember um, 
reading that under under Nikolai Ceausescu, um, human life meant nothing. Obedience to him and to socialists was all that mattered. So I was thinking, what right do I have to endanger the people I love, my family, my children? Are my efforts doomed to fail? For what reason am I exposing myself and my family to such peril? I realized I was at war with myself. My heart wanted to do what was right, to stand up for the Christian and churches against the, the godless regime. I truly believe that God had called me to the legal profession for this purpose. I began weeping bitterly and crying out to God. I grabbed the, the files and I had close to my chest, close to my heart. I understand the utter battle, I told God. I can face adverse, adversities or adversaries in, in the courtroom and even the Securitate, but I cannot win this inner battle between my own heart and mine. Lord, you have to win this victory for me. Take away my fear and replace it with a peace that surpasses all understanding. I need your peace. I need your victory. I went on to share each of my fears in detail. What if I or my children are killed? What if I am in prison and I will never see my daughters again for the rest of my life? What if someone else I care about is punished because of what I am doing? I poured my heart to God. Just to summarize, I had been weeping and praying for a long time that the file was soaked with my tears. But in the same time, I realized that the creeping fear had faded. God had taken away the agonizing battle between my heart and mind and replaced it with a victory of spirit. He had swept away the lies and replaced them with the truth of his love. Taking the files into my briefcase, I collected myself and had it my home. I could not remember a time I so desperately wanted to hug my girls. I truly believed that God would protect me. The question was, from what? What I was reading to you is to show it to you that we all have fears. We have to take our fears to God. My memoir, Saving My Assassin, which I call it God's story in my life, will show you the power of God and how God directed me, opened doors, protected me to accomplish the mission that he had for me in Romania and now here in America. I am asking you to, in order to overcome fear, to take your fear to God. When you wake up in the morning, do you go to the phone to cry out to others? Or do you go to the throne of God and cry out to Him and seek Him for wisdom, for directions? and how to overcome your fear, and how to accomplish your mission. We all have fear. It's human. Even Christ said, if it's possible, take this cup away from me. He knows that we have fear, and he is ready in our intimacy with him, praying, sharing with him, even though he knows before we share with him our fears, but it's good for us to hear ourselves what the fear is and how we express that fear. And God, in his amazing, amazing love, will calm our soul, will help us to go through the storm and walk on the water and accomplish amazing things. 
God called you and me to do the impossible things in his power. At under 30 years old, he called me in Romania to defend Christian and human rights cases, to take a dictator to court and win against him, to expose him to the world. Unknown to me, many of my cases, because God did this behind the scene. Unknown to me at that time in Romania, many of my cases became part of United Nations reports on human rights violations and United States reports on human rights violations. God is a God of mercy and miracles. He will not only help you to do an impossible thing in his power, but he will be glorified by your obedience as you will overcome the fear and walk through the storm with God. He will help you to be strong and courageous and change America and change the world because when America is changed back to to God, the whole world will be changed. God will save you and me to go through the fire, through the storm, and be even more stronger and courageous than we are right now. Long before God put something on your heart, a mission, for me, for me, God changed Romania from a socialist country to a democratic country. God gave me the mission to expose a dictator and to defend Christian and human rights cases. An impossible mission for a young attorney, under 30 years old, 82 pounds, and under five feet tall, a woman, nobody, and a socialist, but a powerful and strong tool in God's hands. God is doing the same thing now in America. To my speeches, to my work with Alliance Defending Freedom, Defending Christian and Human Rights Cases, and to my daily life, God will do the same thing. Because when God put a mission on your heart long before he developed, put that mission on your heart, it was on God's heart. Not only that was in God's heart, but God has a plan for you to be successful, to be courageous, to accomplish the mission in a victorious way to honor him and glorify him. His plan is perfect. The question is, are you willing to be a tool in God's hands? When I'm afraid, I will trust in you. The Bible says, and David said that, and many before us said that. I don't remember how many times I was afraid I was afraid that I was taken into interrogation room and I would never come out of that that place. I was afraid that I would be killed on the way to work or from work or my kids would be kidnapped or my kids would be killed. And God, because I trusted him, gave me the peace that surpasses all understanding. And in the world and in the darkness, in an ungodly culture where you don't have anyone but God, you will realize that it's all that you need to advance your mission in God's power and to be victorious. Overcoming fear cannot be done in any other way. And if you let the fear to overcome your life, you will compromise your walk, you will go through depression and you will not be able to look into your eyes. As you read my memoir, Saving My Assassin, please read chapter three at least three times. Three times. It's a story of my uncle who was too afraid 
to speak up when the time was right. And then when the time was right, or he considered that the time was right, but the socialist was already, socialism was already in power, it was too late. The socialist took my uncle's business as a banker. They put him in psychiatric hospital and drug him because they wanted him to be re-educated in order to be loyal to socialists and communists. If you do not take, um, take seriously what God is asking you to do, it will be a time where the Bible will be uh, something dangerous to have it in your house. You will be required to submit to every lies. And when you speak the truth, you will be punished, you will be killed, you will be put in prison, or you'll disappear at all. I experienced that. I had seen many people in my life in socialist Romania, and I don't want anyone to go through this. Fear, it's a serious emotion that we have to deal with. Only God is capable and able to eliminate that fear. Yes, there are elements and parts of fear that are good for us as humans. We teach our kids not to touch the stove, not to cross the street, especially on an intersection with car running. We don't run the red light. We know that that is a fear of having an accident and so forth. But there is a part of fear that is submission that crosses the line to do something against our God, his principles, his values, and most of all, transforms us into slaves. Remember that Christ died for us and he set us free to live free and to live for him, to live in the world, but not part of the world, to change the world in his power. Fear, it's a serious matter. I heard many people finding excuses. I need to keep my job so I can pay my, my car, or I can pay my house. And the list can go on and on. You know what it's missing? The job is not the source. God is the source. God will provide for you. When you stand up for what is right, God will provide everything for you. Proverbs 32, 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eyes on you. Psalm 32, 8. It's a great, great promise. Jeremiah 33, 3 says another great promise from, from God that I hope will eliminate your fear. Call on me and I will answer you and tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. Not the culture, not your education, not anything else will save you or eliminate your fear. Christ, love, direction, wisdom, and instructions. Remember that you have a mission. 
If you have a pulse, you have a purpose. God puts in you talent, skills, position, place of influence, time for you to leave the right one right now that you can be a tool in his hands and accomplish that mission in his power. Your mission might not be my mission. My mission cannot, might not be your mission. But if you go into your closet, talk with God and ask God to reveal to you your mission, he will reveal to you. The Bible says that he will put his hands on our back and say, this is a way, walk in it. And he will provide for you step by step. Everything that you need. Remember, he called you to to do impossible human things, but possible things in his power. You are here to glorify him and to make him known to others. Through you, through me, through us, God wants to change America. All he's asking us is to be a tool in his hands, to be obedient. And God will replace that human fear with his peace that surpasses all understanding. God will save us and walk with us from the fire and through the fire. He will walk with us on the storm, through the storm. So we can walk with him on the water during this horrifying time where fear tries really hard to overcome us. God will grow you into a strong, a courageous person. You will be transformed by the transforming power of Christ. Even your small, faithful footsteps will be amazing steps, victorious deeds for his glory. I hope you understand that fear is a serious matter. Fear and faith are contagious. Only Christ can cure our fear, our human fear of government, of losing a job, of speaking up, waiting for others to speak. But he will do amazing things, impossible, humanly impossible things in his power. So he will be glorified and magnified, and America will be changed again. Back to God. Remember, your life is important. And fear your fear, your any kind of fear, will be overcome in Christ's power. I can hardly wait for you to contact me and let me know how God work and help you to overcome your fear. You are called to do in Christ's power humanly impossible things, to leave a legacy of faith and faithfulness to God. Until next time, I hope to hear from you. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast. I will put the link in um, uh, down. Or if you want to buy the book, go to virginiaprodanbooks.com slash product slash book. You are precious to God, precious to your family, your business, your community, and to America. Cannot wait to hear from you. If you want to know more about Virginia Prodan, her coaching program, buy her book, Saving My Assassin, or invite Virginia to speak at your events, visit virginiaprodanbooks.com. Thank you.